I would like to take a moment to look at the ethene molecule, C2H4. Ethene used to be known as ethylene, but the IUPAC name is now ethene. In particular, I want to figure out what orbitals are involved in the bonding of ethene. C2H4 has two carbons bonded to each other and then two hydrogens bonded to each of the carbons. And to satisfy the octet rule, there is a double bond between the two carbons. Each of these carbons has three sites around the central atom, two single bonds and a double bond, which means Vesper would say that each of these carbons has a trigonal planar shape. So drawing the Lewis structure is one thing, but if I were to draw the shape, I would show these hydrogens coming off at 120 degree bond angles from the carbon. If we have a trigonal planar shape, that means that each of these carbons has an sp2 hybridization one s orbital and two p orbitals blended together to make our trigonal planar shape. The third p orbital is just perpendicular to the plane here, sticking in and out of the screen. So if we want to look at what orbitals are overlapping, for the hydrogen and the carbon, that's going to be the s orbital for the hydrogen and the sp2 orbital for the carbon overlapping to make that bond. We call that straight overlap of a bond a sigma bond, and we use a lowercase sigma to indicate a sigma bond. So each of these carbon-hydrogen bonds is a sigma bond. I think what's more interesting is to look at that carbon-carbon double bond. If I'm to take a side view of it, what I would see is one carbon here, and that carbon would have an sp2 orbital sticking out of it. I have another carbon with an sp2 orbital sticking out. The other sp2 orbitals are involved with bonding with the hydrogen. I just want to focus on the carbon-carbon bond. When these orbitals overlap, that is a sigma bond. It's the most common type of bonding that we see between nonmetals. However, remember that in an sp2 orbitals, there are these p orbitals that are just sticking out that are perpendicular to them. So this is an unhybridized p orbital over here and this is an unhybridized p orbital over here. In order to form the double bond in ethene we have to overlap these p orbitals. But as you can see from their arrangement it's really really hard to get them to overlap. They kind of have to bend and do this strange kind of side to side touching. It happens, it's just not as convenient and not as strong as the end-to-end -to -end touching that you see in a sigma bond. We call this side-to-side -side touching a pi bond. And it's not really a coincidence that pi bonding often happens between p orbitals. And sigma bonding often involves s orbitals. So I've drawn two red lines here, which might make you think that those are two separate bonds, but remember, each one of these double lobes here is a single p orbital. So this carbon has a p orbital here, and this carbon has a p orbital. And so you're overlapping both lobes of the orbital to get this pi bond. What I'm trying to show here is a single sigma bond and a single pi bond. Every time you make a double bond, you generate one sigma bond and one pi bond. Let's try this with ethine or what used to be known as acetylene. Ethine is C2H2, and I want to figure out what orbitals are involved. And then we can figure out how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds are present. C2H2 is two carbons bonded to each other, and then each of the carbons has a hydrogen coming off. Now to satisfy the octet, we actually need a triple bond between the carbons. If you look at this molecule, we have a linear structure. We have two sites around each of the carbons, and so they form 180 degree bond angles. And when we looked at our hybridization, we said that each of these carbons were sp hybridized. So it's the sp orbitals and the carbons that are overlapping with each other, and it's an sp orbital from a carbon that's overlapping with the s orbital from a hydrogen. And that's forming three sigma bonds. So we have a sigma bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, a sigma bond between this carbon and the hydrogen, and then you have a sigma bond between the two carbons. Remember those sigma bonds are those end-to-end -end overlapping. They're really stable. Because of our sp hybridization, we have two unhybridized p orbitals. 
Now those p orbitals would be perpendicular to the sp orbitals and perpendicular to each other. If you think of the sp orbitals on the y-axis, the remaining p orbitals would be on the x and the z axis. Those p orbitals are going to be involved in that side to side pi bonding. It's not as strong as a sigma bond, but when you have a pi bond, you usually have a combination of a sigma bond and a pi bond. In this case, we have multiple p orbitals that are overlapping. Because we have a triple bond, we would form the sigma bond as the initial bond and then you would have two pi bonds that can form with the remaining p orbitals. So the molecule forms three sigma bonds and two pi bonds. That triple bond in the middle is a combination of one sigma bond and the two pi bonds. Just like the double bond before was a sigma bond and one pi bond.